Hello, I'm Jeff Bickle, a level design student at the Guildhall at SMU. This is the third video in my matinee tutorial video series, and I will be showing you in the May 2011 build of the UDK how to uh, use rotational movement in matinee, how to animate lights. We'll be setting up a brief cutscene, and there are a few other odds and ends that I'll show you throughout the video. Let's get started. What I want to do is animate this, uh, I'm going to call it a fan blade, really it's uh, sort of a metal beam. I want it to animate to spin 360 degrees on a loop. So we'll go into the matinee I have set up for it. And as you can see I've already added the keyframes. The important thing here is that these keyframes will handle rotational as well as positional information. So you would add them the exact same way you would as if you were moving the object, but in between each keyframe, instead of moving it, you would just rotate it. The thing to remember is that uh, each keyframe, you should really only rotate it up to 90 degrees. Uh, if you start rotating it uh, large amounts, uh, the animation tends to freak out and does not look right in game. But as you can see, I set it up right here to spin 90 degrees between each keyframe, like so, and return back to the beginning. And then in motion, it looks like that. Uh, really very simple stuff. And in here, did not forget to check it to looping so that it does not just do one, one rotation and stop. So. We want the player to be able to start this by shooting this smaller beam here that's blocking the way. So to do that, with this selected, we'll right click it in Kismet. We'll say add a new event using this interp actor whenever it takes damage. So now whenever the player shoots this, it will immediately play the fan spinning animation. But that's not going to quite look right, because that beam is still going to be there that was blocking it before. So we can fix this really easy with another matinee. We'll open it up. We'll add ourselves a new empty group. We'll call it um, Beam Disappear. And then in here, inside the group, instead of adding a new movement track, we're going to add a new float property track. It'll prompt you to select which property you want to be changing, and it only really gives us the option of draw scale, so we'll go ahead and choose that. Now right here, with our time set at zero, we'll enter to add a keyframe. Go ahead and drag the end of this animation way up here, because we don't want the animation to be five seconds long if we're just using zero seconds of it. And now in here, we'll open up the curve editor by clicking this little grayed out box. And we'll click up here to view fit to all. Now right here is our point, and that just tells us the data that it's at, or the data that it has for that value, which is 1. So we can set it to do any percentage we want. We're just going to set it to 0. So now, when this animation is triggered, it will immediately disappear. So we'll just set that up to also happen when this takes damage. So in game, that's gonna look a bit like this. All right. Now, we want that light back there to be blinking during this whole process. Sort of give off a, a warning vibe. So to do that, we'll go in here, set ourselves up a new matinee, and instead of adding a new empty group, we'll add a new lighting group. We'll call this blinking light. Now this will give us 
tracks automatically set instead of us needing to set them ourselves. We're really only concerned with the brightness track right now, but there are uh, very many things you could do with light. You could change the color, uh, set the radius to expand and contract, but really we just want the radi or we just want the brightness to be off and on. Set it to uh, we'll say a second for the full blank, and with this track selected, we'll add three keyframes. It doesn't matter what the data is at this point. We'll be changing them in the curve editor. So at the zero second mark. We'll add a keyframe. Right about halfway, we'll add a keyframe. And then at the one second mark, we'll add a keyframe. Then we'll click on this grayed out box again to get us to show us the curve editor up here. We'll view the fit doll. And then this middle one right here, we're going to set the value by right clicking it and set it to zero. Now what this will do, we'll view the fit to all again. Fit the view to all again. Now what this will do is slowly scale down the brightness to zero and then slowly scale it back up, which is not at all what we want. We want it to be a binary light that's either on or off. So to fix this, we click on this right here. We come over here and we click constant. This means that until it hits a new keyframe, it will always be at exactly that value. We'll do the same for the bottom one, and now it will be on until it's off, and then off until it's on. It will not scale up in brightness at all. And so, we'll hook that up to the take damage as well, and we'll set it to looping. So now, when you shoot it, this light begins blinking, and that fan begins spinning, and the beam disappears. But it's not really clear to the player where he needs to go. So what we'll do is we'll set up a short cutscene that will fly the camera up here and show this exit corridor right here. Now I've already added the camera by going into the actor classes, common camera actor, and adding it here. So we'll open up Kismet. Now to do this, with the camera selected, we'll right click, select new matinee. In here we'll add a new camera group. We'll call this cutscene. And in here you can see it gives you a field of view angle and a movement track. We're not going to concern ourselves with the field of view, uh, the default's just fine. But in here, we will slowly animate the camera to come up here, pan a bit up, come out a bit further, Move the time slider always before you move the actors you're animating. And pan a bit up. And we would do this until we got the effect that we wanted. To preview this effect, if you just play it here, oh, sorry, scroll back to the beginning. If you just play it here, you will just get to watch the camera move. But we want to see what it looks like. So if you click this grayed out camera right here, it will switch to the view from that camera. Then you can play and it'll show you what it'll look like from that camera's perspective. Now, this is all well and good and it will animate the camera just fine. And if we trigger this right now, it would animate the camera, but it would not switch the view to that camera. So the player would have no idea that this cutscene existed. So to fix that, we need to add a new director group and at the very beginning, we'll select that track, hit enter to add a new keyframe, and it'll prompt you which group you want it to cut to. You want it to cut to the group that has all of your uh, camera movement information in it. So we'll do that. And now in the game, when this gets triggered, it will set 
uh, the active camera to this camera you've just animated and then when this animation is complete it will set the camera back to the player's view. Now I've already set up a much smoother animation so we're just gonna go ahead and use that. But uh, I just took the step, I just followed the steps that I just showed you. And now since that transition's a bit jarring I've also added a second delay here by right-clicking selecting new ac or new action miscellaneous delay now this is just here so that uh, the camera doesn't cut away as soon as the player shoots it and they have a play and they have a chance to see the fan blade spinning before the uh, cutscene starts so we'll set that up from the take damage into the delay and from the delay into the cutscene now, when we test it in-game, you could see, after a second, it cuts to my little cutscene here, and then cuts back to me. However, there's still a problem here. During the cutscene, the player still has full control. And we could fix that very easily by right-clicking in Kismet, adding a new action, under toggle, toggle cinematic mode. Now this just disables player control so they won't be able to move while your animation's playing. So whatever triggers this cutscene animation, so this delay right here, will also enable cinematic mode. And whatever, or whenever this animation is completed, we want to return control to the player, so we'll disable it. Now, in game, the player is not going to be able to move around while that cutscene is playing. And that's it for this video. Uh, I hope you learned a lot. And uh, for more advanced information, you can check out my partner Demetrius's video, a uh, link to which will be in the description. He'll show you some of the more advanced things you can do with Matinee. Thanks for watching.